Have you ever been confused by sink slicer? Perhaps scratching your head as you couldn't make sense of the sink slicer panels. Perhaps feeling frustrated because your slicers were behaving in an unexpected ways. You have come to the right place. In this video, we will cover three things. Firstly, an introduction to sink slicer. What is it? How can it be useful for us? Secondly, a tutorial on sync slicer panel so that we can use it effectively and confidently in the future. And thirdly, a deep dive on the advanced option panel so that you can get a better understanding of the additional options which are available at our disposal. What is sync slicer? Sync slicer is a Power BI feature which allow us to make our slicer behave in a synchronized way, or in other words, behave in the same way. Now you may be thinking, why do we want our slicers to behave in the same way? Let me show you a practical example. Let's look at our Power BI reports. It has slicers on top, and we have several pages, all of which has several slicers on top, except our blank page and our intro page where we don't have any slices. Let's say we are interested in looking at PNL only for year 2022 and month January. Okay, I have just updated the slicers on this page. And if I want to see it in a different format, then I have to repeat that process one more time. I need to make sure that the year is 2022 and the month is one. And then after that, I need to go through all the pages and make sure all the slicers are updated accordingly. Now, this is plenty of work and you may not have the patience to do this, especially if your report is big and gigantic. You have to go through every single page just to update the month and the year. Now. Have you ever wondered, is there an easy way? If only we can just change one slicer and have all the slicers, which are the same as this slicer, have them all updated at the same time. And that's what you can do with sync slicers. Let me show you how we can synchronize the month slicer in this report so that by changing the drop-down list in one slicer, all the slicers in this report can be updated. Step one will be to click view ribbon and then click sync slicer. And then after that, the sync slicer pane will appear on the right and it will prompt you to select a slicer in one of your report pages to start syncing it across other pages. So click the slicer that we want to sync, which is this month slicer, and then a table will appear in the slicer pane on the right. There are three columns in this table. The first column is the page name. Notice something? The page names that you see in here are the same as the page names that you see down here. And notice something else. Some of the fonts are in black. Some of the fonts are in green. What's the difference? When they are in black, it means that our slicers are not present in those pages. So intro and blank are black and then the four pages are in green. So watch this. We have no slicers in here, no slicer over there. And we have the month slicer in here, in here, in here, and in here. That's why when you click the month slicer and this table appear, you see black in intro and blank and green in all these four tabs in the middle. Now let's look at the second column. This circle like thing, this is a symbol for synchronize. When you tick it, it means that you want to synchronize all the slicer. Let's just tick all four. So if when I tick all four, it means this. When I change one of them, let's say I'm changing it in here in this page into two. Now watch something. When I go into PNL traditional, the month has become two. When I go into PNL dashboard, the month has become two again. When I click the slicer, now I'm in PNL dashboard, I'm going to change it to say month number five. And watch this. Everything is now month five. Here, here, and here. And that's because what am I thinking? I'm thinking everything. So it means that when I change one, everything is changed. There is an option. 
If you don't want all the slicer to change, we can sync only some of them. For example, I'm going to untick two. I'm going to untick PNL dashboard and PNL dashboard two. So that the only thing that I'm syncing is just my PNL traditional and traditional two. So now, if I am changing this to month 12, watch that, that's 12. In traditional, that's 12 because they're sync. These two are synced together. But in PNL dashboard, it will not be month 12. It's still month 5 because it's not sync to the PNL traditional. Makes sense? And the same with PNL dashboard too. It's still 5 as well, which was the previous value because it wasn't synced to PNL traditional. And likewise, now if I'm changing this to number 1, for example, none of the slicers in other pages would change. It's still the same as what it was before. Let's look at the third column. This third column with the I symbol, it controls whether we want the slicer to be visible or not visible. What does it mean? When we untick this column, it means that we don't want to see it. When we tick it, it means that we want to see it. So at the moment, everything is ticked, which is why we can see our slicers. But if I untick this, watch, it's gone. Now I'm going to tick it, watch, it appears again. So if you don't want to see the slicer, you want it hidden, not deleted, just hidden, then just untick it. Now, you can do that in just one page or everywhere. For example, in here, you can still see the slicer. Now, if I untick it, now it's gone, yeah. And likewise in the PNL dashboard, look, no more month slicer. Now we've got a problem. How do I bring it back when they're completely gone? There is nothing to click to make it appear. Don't panic. What you can do is you can click the selection pane and then a selection pane would appear on the right. Once you are there, notice something. We have a slicer which is hidden because of this symbol in here. So in the selection pane, you can see what other objects are currently hidden and you can click it one more time to make it appear or hide it again. Yeah. And if you select it without clicking that, the sync slicer pane appear so that you can also control it in here and make it appear everywhere. So now you have understood all the three columns, the meaning of page name, synchronization, as well as visible or invisible column that you can control from this sync slicer pane. Next, let's explore the advanced options. When you click the chevron sign, this appear this writing that says enter group name to sync selections to any other visuals with that group name and then there is a blank box and then there are some two tick boxes sync field changes to other slicer sync filter changes to other slicer what does it mean it sounds confusing that's what i felt a couple of days ago when i first came across this but don't worry we are going to go through the important concepts that will help you to understand the advanced options for Sync Slicer so that by the end of this video, you are going to fully get what it means. In order to be able to utilize the advanced options of the Sync Slicer with confidence, we need to first understand three concepts. Firstly, we can group slicers. Yes. Once a slicer has been grouped together, then we can do additional stuff. And the additional stuff that we can do are basically the ability to synchronize not only the drop down box selection that we make on a slicer, but also field changes as well as filter changes. Okay, so let's get started by understanding the concept of grouping a slicer. How do we group a slicer? Very, very simple. Just put a name in here. For example, in here, I'm clicking month slicer and I'm going to create a group name and I'm going to call it month traditional. Now notice something. After I type a name, then these two options are no longer grayed out. It become black and there is an option to tick 
or untick. I'm just going to leave it tick for now. Okay. I have named this month month traditional and I'm going to pick another slicer that I'm going to group with this and I'm going to select this slicer in PNL traditional too. Okay. So I'm going to click the month and at the moment there is no name in here when I click this slicer. So I'm going to paste the name from the previous slicer. So now these two slicers, the month on PNL traditional one and the month on PNL traditional two, they are now grouped. Yes, that's how you group a slicer. As simple as that. Let's try to understand the next concept, which is sync field changes to other slicer. What does it mean? I'm going to untick the filter changes so that we can focus on just field changes for now. Field changes is basically the field that is being used by this slicer. What does that mean? So I'm going to click this slicer month and the field that is currently being referenced for this slicer is month. Yeah, because this is the field name and that's the month that is being used in the field pane over here. Let's say I change that instead of month, I'm going to put maybe quarter. So I'm going to remove month and drag quarter. So now I have quarter in my slicer because I have linked things into a group, which is month traditional, my other slicer would also be updated from month to quarter. Now watch this. I'm going to click PNL traditional and voila. See how it's quarter as well? Because they are linked. They are sync. And likewise, because this button is tick in here. Now I'm going to untick that for a second so that it's just sync field changes. So if I change that to week now and just watch this, that becomes week. Yep, but because only the month or the week in PNL traditionals that was previously linked, not in the dashboard, that's still month. And that's still month as well. Because in here, in this slicer, we did not group them. There is no group name that we have entered in here. So we are only syncing these two slicers. And that is the meaning of syncing the field changes to other slicer. Next, let's explore the next concept, which is sync filter changes. What does it mean? I'm going to untick the field change and tick the sync filter changes for week number. And I'm going to do the same thing for this other slicer. I'm going to click the filter changes and untick the field changes. And I'll show you what does it mean? What exactly filter changes means? Well, do you know that you can filter the selection in this drop down box, which at the moment is a default of all the weeks in the year up to week 52. What if I don't want the users to be able to select all the weeks? I just want the user to be able to select from week one to week five. Well, we can filter this drop down list by applying a filter in the filter pane. So when I open up the filter pane and click the week number, in here, there is filter on these visual options, and then we can apply a filter. Let's just say less than five and click apply filter and watch this. Now my options is more limited. And if I change that to less than 12, for example, that's what I see only up to 11. Because I tick sync filter changes to other slicer, it means that the changes that has occurred on this slicer where the drop down list has become shorter will also be reflected in this slicer. Watch this. Only after 11. Yes. Now, whereas if you untick the options of sync filter changes to other slicer. Yep. So when you untick that. Then let's make the filter changes. Let's make it less than three apply filter. Now that becomes super short, only one and two, but click this other slicer over here. It's still long because although it's grouped, 
I didn't take the options for Power BI to sync the filter changes. So those are the options available to us. We can sync the drop down selections. We can sync the changes in the field that get applied into our filter or our slicer, as well as the filtering that we apply to our slicer that can be synchronized as well. I hope you find this video helpful in giving you a better understanding of Sync Slicer. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, as well as leave me some comments and suggestions for future improvement. See you next time.